MS Creativas presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust. I do find you all, my dear friends. We have one more mountain experience, and we are coming from the old time religion where we own Mount Carmel for this morning and the rest of this week. I've decided that we reflect on the book of 1 Kings. We are still in chapter 18. We want to look at verse 31 and work our way all the way to verse number 39. This is what the whole man provides for. At 31, Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel will be your name. And he built an altar with the stones in the name of Yahweh. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold about four gallons. Next, he arranged the wood, cut up the bull and placed it on the wood. He said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the offering to be burned and on the wood. Then he said, a second time, and they did it a second time. And then he said, a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar. He even filled the trench with water. At the time of offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah, the prophet, approached the altar and said, Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Today, let it be known that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that at your word I have done all these things. Answer me, Lord, answer me so that these people will know that you, Yahweh, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then Yahweh's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust. And number five, it licked up the water that was in the trench. Hallelujah. Verse number 39, when all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, Yahweh, he is God. Yahweh, he is God. May we call upon the God who answers with fire this morning. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, the week is ahead of us, and dear Lord, we want to learn from thee in your word. May you speak to us this morning and equip us for service in those spaces where we operate. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, draw nigh unto us. Amen. My good friends, without much ado, as usual, just all five points, the usual points. At point number one, there is what we know as is known as the goodwill. The goodwill is in whose name you build. Now you're going to notice that as Elijah builds the ark, builds the, the altar, not the ark, yes, the altar, he builds it in Yahweh's name. No matter how good a builder you are, never get the two mixed up. You build in someone's name, never in your own name. When you are out there as an employee and you are dealing with clients, do not think all oh, those clients are warming up to you. They are also warming to the corporate name. So when you take off and think, let me just go off, all oh, these people are coming with me, that's when you're going to be shocked when you realize it is the goodwill of the name. And Elijah goes out to build an ark with his own hands. As he does so, he does it in Yahweh's name. And he even prays so that it may be known that all that I have done, I have done at your word. May I challenge you, as you go into the workspace, do so in the name of the one who is superior to you. And point number two, of a delegation of tasks is an irresponsibility on the part of the leader. Why do I say so? Notice when Elijah is building this particular altar, he cut the bull, he made the trench himself, and then he calls upon the people to pour water. Four things are being done here. Building the ark, preparing or dressing the bull, and digging up the trench, and pouring water. Of these four tasks, Elijah does three of them. Three of them are done by Elijah. And the fourth one 
is the one that is done by the people. Now we have a scenario where you're going to find that a leader will only do one out of three. They do 25% of the task, but Elijah does 75% of the task. He leads from the front. He is leads by example. When you have a leader who just delegate even 100% of the work, then you will know, you will know. You have a leader who leads from behind, a leader who does not take the front seat, who does not take the leading role. Such a leader is a leader who causes despondency on the followers. As you go into the workspace, may I challenge you, as I encourage you, lead from the front. Do something. Do, do not just call for things and never do anything. People are waiting for you to do things. Remember, remember, they are already suffering from indecision whether to follow you or not to follow you. If you are to win their hearts and turn them back, you need to lead from the front. Reposition yourself. A point number three, do it the hard way. Do not just seek the easy way out. Someone said, easy come, easy go. When you do it the hard way, it lasts. When you do it the hard way, it is believable. When you do it the hard way, it has a wow effect, a lasting effect. What, what am I saying? Elijah says, now what I need you to do is to come up with four gallons Four gallons of water. What does that mean to have four gallons of water? Basically, a gallon is about five liters. By four, that will give us five times four, 20 liters. So he says, pour 20 liters. When they pour 20 liters, said, for the second time, 20 times two, 40. And he says, for the third time, 20 times three, 60. So 60 liters were poured on the offering. 60 liters were poured on the wood. 60 liters of water were poured even into the trench. And when Elijah is done, he then goes on to carry out the sacrifice. Why am I saying you need to do it the hard way? So as to prove, first of all, that you are doing a supernatural thing. God is with us. Why do you have to do it the hard way? So that you can set yourself apart. The prophets of Baal that we have looked at in the last two or three installments, you will notice they never poured water. But Elijah sets himself apart. So even in the competition that you're in, this is basically competition in business sense, in business language. It's a competition. If you are going to be the supplier of choice, you ought to do some things different. You need to go the extra mile. If you're going to be a deliverer of choice, you need to go that extra mile. Pour water. Prove that you're not reeking. Prove that you know what you're doing. Prove that you are having all this thing under control. And at point number four, Elijah goes on to say, I need you, Lord, to answer this prayer. And why should this prayer be answered? The reasons are very simple. At the time of offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah, Elijah the prophet, approached the altar and said, Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel. The first part of this prayer says, let it be known you are God in Israel. And then he goes on, and I am your servant. So what is the relationship that Elijah seeks to establish here? He, 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 he establishes a master and servant relationship. He establishes a superior subordinate relationship and in your context, an employer-employee kind of relationship or an agent and a principal kind of a relationship. The last two are the ones that would apply into the workspace. It is either you have an employer-employee relationship, this is the, a, a, a human resources or an employment kind of relationship, or you have a contractual one where you have a principal and an agent. Now Elijah is bringing himself within the scope and he says, let it be known that you are God and I am your servant. When I am known to be your servant, Whatever I say then comes from God. Whatever I do is binding upon heaven. There is a vicarious liability that ascends to heaven. Why? Because I am an agent of heaven. I have authority from heaven. Even though it may not be written, it has to be implied at this point by conduct. 
I have called these people because I'm an agent of heaven. I have taken even a bull from them because I'm an agent of heaven. So if these people come claiming their bull, they must know that it was taken on the Lord's business. When these people come to me claiming any redress, they must know I was on heaven's mission. And what am I saying unto you? There is what is known, the implied and the express authority that you hold while you're at the workplace. The express authority is what you are conferred with, the power to act. The implied authority is what is deemed to be authority that you have to exercise within the scope of your operation. And Elijah says to this, let it be known I am your servant. People who walk in are going to charge that you belong to a certain company because of how you conduct yourself. And lastly, as we come to the end, notice Elijah did not have to dance. I'm building up from Friday. Elijah did not have to cut himself. All he did was pray. And when he had prayed, fire came from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, the stones, the wood, and the water. And how did the people respond? Not only did they say, that is good. They fell down on their faces and worshipped God. As you go through this week, take time to see the Lord. As you meet him, fall down on your face and worship him. This is the only and logical response to an interaction with the Most High God. Until we meet again on Friday, may God bless you. May he prosper you. May he keep you. And may he even increase your territory. In Jesus' name, amen.